Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I'm Kimberly Boschman, and this is the Intentionally Intuitive Podcast. In this episode, we are going to take a deep dive into the energies and the numerology for October 2022. We're also going to look at not only how these energies will affect the collective, we're also going to break it down into each life path number. And for each life path number, we're also going to take a look at how the new moon and the full moon illuminations for the month will um, potentially affect your energy. Uh, And we also have a partial solar eclipse that's occurring on October 25th. So there is a lot going on this month. Uh, This, of course, is a general forecast. If you would like a personalized reading and uh, coaching session, uh, you can find my information in the description box below. I would absolutely love to work with you. And that one-on-one will give you a better idea of the energies, the numerology that your soul has signed up for uh, in this lifetime and how to potentially best work with them. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So... October is a potentially volatile, (laughs) there's a lot of volatile energies circulating this month. Um, Of course, you know, just because the energy is there uh, and it carries a certain amount of weight, it's really what we do with the energy that's going to make the difference, right? I always say that it's how we participate. It's how we show up. Um, You can have volatile energy, you can have challenging energy, but if you can move through it, you know, change your perspective, change, um, again, how you participate with the energy, the outcome will be, uh, derived from your actions, not necessarily from the energy, right? So just kind of keep that in mind because this, this can be somewhat challenging energies that are really at the focal point for October, to be completely honest. It's a 16, seven universal cycle. So I would say, the key word for the month of October is awakening. The influencing energy of the 16 is really what I want to focus on because that 16 energy can bring about major transformational events that can have the power to completely change the course and the direction of someone's life. So in tarot, the 16 energy is represented by the tower card. So often when we think of tower energy, we think of massive destruction, chaos, or crumbling of major uh, parts or points of our lives that need to be then rebuilt and typically rebuilt in a different way so that they can be more sustainable. So This, of course, can be one aspect of this energy, and there are people who this month will see those energies come in full force to dismantle something that's not working and to basically crumble it down so that it can be rebuilt in a way that is much more um, beneficial for the long run, right? But this energy can also represent major realizations and aha moments that allow us to sort of come out of the other side of a particularly challenging situation with much more self-awareness and strength and then armed with that self-awareness or um, clarity, right, around a situation. And then we can choose to make different decisions around that situation, um, around relationships, around career, around purpose, whatever, wherever this sort of this energy shows up. And again, you know, if everything in your life at this moment through October is pretty good, is, is moving pretty well, you feel pretty sound and secure. Um, you know, sometimes life will throw curveballs, but for the most part, if things feel like they're pretty solid and you've been doing a lot of work, you know, inner work, outer work, whatever, you may not really feel these energies too um, intensely, right? You may have gone through this energy previously that that helped you to rebuild in the way that you needed to rebuild. Um, and so for you, it may be that someone that you love or someone that you know is really moving through these energies and you're just called to sort of hold space and to help them through it. <clears throat> so that's really possible as well. 
Uh, so yeah, so the 16 and the tower energies are not disempowering energies. I want to make that very, very clear. A lot of times, again, it's kind of like we see tower energy come in or we see 16 energy come in and we're like, oh shit, like <laughs> what is the universe going to do to me now? Or what is life going to do to me now, right? Like there is definitely things in life that we cannot control. But we can control, again, like how we show up, how we change our, um, again, our perspective around whatever the situation is to make it work for us, even if it looks different than how we feel it should look or it looks different than how we expect it to look. Um, there is empowerment in that process. There is um, this sense of gaining your power back when you realize that, yeah, you don't always have control over what's happening to you or other people's actions or whatever, but you absolutely have control and power when it comes to how you show up to the situation, how you choose to participate, uh, the decisions that you choose to make around a situation. You always have that that ace in your hand, right? Always. So the tower energy, the 16 energy are not disempowering energies. They are very much empower, empowering energies that assist us through this sort of divine intervention in making much more aligned and supportive decisions when it comes to the direction of our own lives. Now, again, <clears throat> people can go through these these sort of tower 16 energy uh, moments uh, or periods and still continue to make the same choices. And guess what? They're just going to continue to face very difficult challenges around those experiences until they come to their own realization that maybe I need to do things differently. Maybe I need to participate differently. Maybe I need to call in um, and surround myself with different types of people, right? A different vibration. <clears throat> and so again, it always, always, always comes down to how we choose to participate. We are always in the driver's seat. So it isn't always, of course, the most comfortable experience while we're in the middle of it. However, once we are on the other side of it, we're often very grateful for the much needed transformation, the much needed clarity, and the greater understanding around maybe where it was that we were stuck, maybe where there we had blind spots, um, maybe again, where it is that we kept showing up in a particular way that was influencing the experience in a way that was not working, right? So again, this is an opportunity for much greater understanding. And again, that sort of um, awakening <clears throat> where it's like once you sort of wake up to this, whatever this is, you can't not know it anymore. You can't not see it, right? Um, so again, as I mentioned at the end of the month, we have a very significant solar eclipse occurring at uh, October, uh, occurring on October 25th. That's in the side of in the sign of Scorpio, um, which of course Scorpio is the epitome of death, transformation, rebirth. It is the epitome of tower energy. Um, because it's ruled by Pluto and co-ruled by Mars, right? And so <clears throat> this month, not only do we have the 16 energy, but it coincides very much with the scorpionic energy that we've got throughout a lot of the month as well, especially the latter, the latter portion of October, especially at that eclipse. And I think that that eclipse for a lot of people where there needs to be some kind of mass transformation, where there needs to be some kind of... Um, again, change in direction. <clears throat> I think that eclipse is going to be a pivotal point for a lot of people. Uh, again, where it comes, to, when it comes to these energies of the 16, seven. And so I think that we'll probably see these, the 16 energy be most sort of um, <clears throat> condensed or uh, yeah, most potent d around the time of this eclipse. And now also with the eclipse energy, um, you know, that energy can can start a storyline or continue a storyline, but that we'll see play out for maybe the next three to six months, right? So it's not like in October or around this eclipse that we're going to necessarily see all of these things happen, 
or these, this massive awakening occur within our lives or on a global stage. Remember, this is also playing out on a global stage. Um, but this can be the, the initiation. <laughs> this can be sort of that lightning strike. And then <clears throat> for the next several months, sort of see how that plays out. Uh, and so a lot more clarity will come in and a lot more of this like awakening potential will come through in the next six or so months. <clears throat> so just kind of keep that in mind. Um, but it does have the potential to be very life altering where it needs to be. That's the key. It's again, these energies don't work against us. This is the universe working with our soul to get us to where it is that the soul wants to get to in this lifetime, right? And so <clears throat> when the energies are at play, <clears throat> it comes in where it needs to. And so it's very much, even when it seems challenging, especially when it seems challenging, these are assisting energies because sometimes we need that kick in the butt to change direction, to see things differently, to get out of our own sort of drama and our own storyline to, again, get a much broader perspective. <clears throat> and so it's very beneficial. These, these energies are very beneficial even though they can be incredibly uncomfortable. So when it comes to the 16-7 cycle, the sort of unforeseen and sudden events of this period are, again, a meant to sort of overthrow existing conditions, including in the material sense. So poor habits are included with this and belief systems are also going to be included in this. So if we have a certain belief system that has not been working, this energy will assist in shaking it up. Uh, we could easily see, again, big shakeups on the global stage now, as well as in our personal lives. That's very, very possible. Again, this can, this can kind of, you know, a lot of times with 16 or tower energy, there has to be this breaking point. There has to be this chaotic uh, culmination sometimes. And so first you're going to see that before you see the, everything crumble and then before you can rebuild. That's sort of what makes it so uncomfortable. Um, and so again, we could easily see this play out on the global stage and that can look like chaos, that can look like volatility, that can look like things just falling apart, but it needs to so that we can rebuild in a much more elevated fashion, right? Uh, so things that are done at this time for, or have been done, I would say have been done for strictly selfish reasons that also aim to hurt others, that can absolutely have a boomerang effect and cause great loss for the instigator. So it's sort of like instant karma. I think of like the John Lennon song, instant karma, instant karma is going to get you. <laughs> it's kind of like that. So it's not only like, you know, things that have been in the process of being done for selfish reasons to hurt other people. Um, it's also things that are instigated at this time that are being done to uh, for personal gain and that also have the aftermath of hurting others. Um, any situation like that, you're going to see over the next several months, there be this like massive boomerang effect where it's like, it comes back to that instigator. Um, there may be some it may wreak havoc, you know, in its path, but it's going to come back to the instigator. So there's no sort of getting out of this if your intentions are ill-willed. Um, whatever it is that you instigate, um, initiate under this energy has the potentiality to come right back at you, just like instant karma. Um, whether you believe in karma or not, it's kind of like... Uh, yeah, so it's going to find its way back to you. So I would be very, um, I would check your integrity before taking action this month. And that's not to like scare you. That's just, you know, if what you're doing is out of the kindness of your heart or out of sort of vindictiveness or trying to get ahead and stepping on whoever you can step on or whatever, you know, right? We know when something is good. We know when something is bad. Uh, we know if something is good for us and others. We know if something isn't just from the way that it feels, right? 
So there's no kind of getting around that. Um, as much as you may want to do something for selfish purposes, I would highly recommend maybe not doing that. Uh, it's one thing to do things for a selfish reason if it's not hurting anybody else, right? Including yourself. Um, and I would really say if it's not hurting other people, right? Because uh, you have free will. But... Uh, yeah, just just check your check the integrity <laughs> before you t- take any major uh, risks this month, especially if it has the potential to um, if it doesn't if it isn't if it goes against the goodwill of others, maybe don't do it. <laughs> OK, so in matters of the heart under 16, seven energy uh, where there has been deception or lies Uh, these areas can come to light now to be dealt with. So if there's been like a separation from a close partner or someone who you feel a a close soul connection with um, and trouble from trouble in relationships, typically, right? Generally speaking, often stem from some kind of ego, pride and emotions that haven't been properly dealt with. And so we can have the opportunity to properly do that now. Again, if we choose to, I mean, it, it will surface and then we can decide how we want to address it. Um, but it's very possible under the 16-7 energy, remember this is awakening energy, is going to bring things to light. Um, and that includes in relationships or matters of the heart. And so again, it's that digging deeper and getting to the truth of the matter um, so again, so if there's anywhere where you haven't been completely honest with a partner or somebody who you're close with, chances are that is going to come to light in one way or another, because as the saying goes, the truth always uh, prevails or comes to the surface, right? And under 16-7 energy, it's really hard to keep those things hidden. So it's very possible that those things will come to the surface. And so it's much better for everyone involved, if you are just upfront and honest about whatever it is, get it out in the open, deal with it, and then move from that space, uh, as opposed to it coming to light and then having to try to clean that up, <clears throat> right? It's just, it's just, it, yeah, just save your energy, deal with whatever it is that you need to deal with, and work through it in whatever ways. And remember that, you know, you have the choice to, to handle it however you want to handle it. And so does your partner or the other person. And you have no control over what they choose to do. But you do have <clears throat> an opportunity at this time to, uh, by invitation, uh, before divine intervention comes in, to just bring it to the light. Just get it out there, right? And just deal with the aftermath. Um, yeah, so, so, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to leave that there. <clears throat> the energy operating under this cycle can feel really, really intense. So try not to overwork. Try not to take big, huge risks in business, financially, or in relationships now, unless it's something that you have been working towards for quite some time or prior to this energy sort of coming in, which I would say we've probably been feeling for at least a month now. <clears throat> Be really careful about engaging in conflicts with others now. Um, you know, like I said, this is, this can be volatile energy. And so again, things can be brought to the surface now that can really get people's emotions sparked. There can be a lot of reactivity. Um, so just, you know, maneuver that, those waters, um, gently, right. And if it's not the right time to try to you know, talk through whatever it is that you need to talk through or work through whatever you need to work through because the other person or you are not in the right headspace, then just pause, take a pause, take a breath and wait until the energy feels a a little bit less volatile because there is the potentiality, like I said, for things to really flare up now um, and come to light. And you don't know how other people are going to handle that. So I would say, be very careful about reactivity, be very careful about engaging in those conflicts with others. This is a month where personal peace over the need to be right will be worth more than its weight in gold. Um, So where you can choose personal peace and harmony this month, that is going to, not avoidance, right? Like, but, but having the conversation and letting the person know, 
I'm not in the headspace or maybe you're not in the headspace. Let's push the pause button. Let's wait and come back to this. We're not going to avoid it. We're not going to dismiss it. We'll come back to it when we're in a better place. Um, That is going to be so much uh, more beneficial than trying to butt heads over whatever this is. This can also be an incredibly ambitious period where we feel like we have more energy and drive than we know what to do with. So take note of those big ideas and focus that energy on planning and getting your ducks in a row now. Do your research, work to assemble your team or get funding or come up with your business plan. The insights that can come in under this energy do hold the potential to be very, very successful. You know, there can be a potentiality here for eventual fame, prosperity, and great financial gain, especially if there is integrity behind what it is that you're building towards and you aren't obsessed with ownership. That's a big one. Because again, this is kind of like Pluto energy, even a, a, um, a big dose of like Mars energy and Plutonian, like Pluto energy can be very obsessive. (laughs) It can really be obsessed with like ownership and like control and those things, right? Uh, It's a power energy. Uh, It's very much like a dominating, powerful energy. And so just be really, check your integrity behind whatever it is that you're building at this point or what you're moving towards and make sure that you aren't obsessed with ownership. And of course that goes with relationships as well. So just keep checking in with yourself. Um, With this big burst of sort of fiery energy, we may feel at this time, um, yeah, like we're just sort of consumed by it. So try to channel that energy into a controlled burn that is going to be sustainable rather than something that's sort of combustible and that burns out really quickly, leaving us feeling depleted. Because that's very, very possible with all this energy. Uh, that sort of type of over expenditure could eventually take a toll on our health. And so we need to make sure we slow down and we steady the pace. Um, Because just remember that, you know, there isn't necessarily unlimited kindling. We want to make sure that we're like, we have this slow burn so that we can build something sustainable. Um, I would also say, write down any aha moments or deep profound insights that come in for you this month because chances are you might not be able to work with those ideas necessarily right at that moment or the aha moment can feel a little bit overwhelming when it first comes in like when that lightning bolt first strikes and so we just want to make sure that we're writing it down because chances are that uh, these are going to be key areas that we will be working with for the next several months. So we will be revisiting all of this um, until we get to the, you know, until we overcome it, until we work through it, until we build whatever it is that we're trying to build. And so whatever comes in this month for you that feels significant is significant. And these are going to be key components to a much greater storyline, right? So pay attention. Um, yeah. And you know, you don't have to write it down because it's going to come back. It'll revisit. It'll keep revisiting until it's, it's acknowledged and it's worked with, but, but writing it down can help you to feel like you have some level of control over the situation, right? Like you can start to plan, you can start to figure out how to work best with the energy that works for you. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at your own uh, personal uh, life path number and take a look at those full moon and new moon illuminations as well. Life path number eight. So I pulled an animal spirit message for you all and you got oyster energy. And this is so incredibly beautiful. I love this for eights. Um, and it actually uh, correlates really beautifully with your the energies that you're working with throughout October. So I love this. So oyster brings up this energy of beauty and resilience, definitely resilience. So you think about the oyster creates this beautiful pearl from the sand and the silt and the mud, right? It creates this incredibly beautiful treasure um, just from dirt, (laughs) 
<laughs> right? And that takes time. That's not something that happens quickly. And so there's something here about just a reminder that if there's something that you have been really working hard towards, really putting all your energy and um, determination towards for a very long time, like this is not, this is very slow moving energy. This isn't quick energy. Pearls are not created overnight. So if there's something in your life where again, it's like you've been really working towards beautifying it, beautifying the, the space, the situation, the relationship, whatever, or creating something from seemingly nothing, right? then this is a reminder with oyster coming through to keep going to keep that you're almost there that you know these that beautiful things take time to create especially when you're creating them from something not so beautiful so to not give up there's definitely this this message of resilience coming through and if it's what you still want and it feels right keep going because there is going to be a reward for your efforts. Um, but you just cannot give up too quickly. And you might be like, well, I've been working on this for five years. Well, maybe it's something that takes seven years to come to fruition, right? Like there is something to be said for divine timing. You can do your part, but the universe also has to do its part. Um, and it's like, the magic is in creating that pearl from the dirt. And so that's going to take time. Um, and you may not know exactly that timeline and you may not need to know that timeline. You just need to keep adding the ingredients that you can offer to create that pearl. And so again, if there's something that you were like, I'm giving up on this because I haven't seen the rewards of it. Um, but it's something you really want and that really feels aligned and that you keep getting closer to, then there's a message here from Oyster about that resilience. So keep going. Now for the month of October for you all, you are going to of course be working with the energies collectively that we talked about in the intro, but there's also this energy of the 24-6 for you all throughout October. So there's definitely something here around, there's a lot for you all coming in around relationships. Like um, relationships that are close to our heart. So siblings, family, romantic partnerships, um, community integration, uh, that is, um, that feels very like significant or close to your heart. You know what I'm saying? So your involvement in the community, um, that feels very close to your heart that is coming in very, very strongly for you for the month of October and for this illumination, the full moon that's happening in Aries on the 9th. For October, there's definitely something around foundations of relationships and how they affect your home life and or community, but definitely the home life. So I would say there's probably going to be some kind of emphasis on, again, like um, romantic relationships or family. Um, and it could be twofold, right? Or it could be like, it depends on what's going on with your circumstances. It could be that things are brought to light or brought to the surface to be dealt with, um, that can have major like awakening energy, right? Like where it like brings to your attention, something that you have been overlooking or, um, bypassing or allowing to happen to not rock the boat, but that needs to be addressed. And so that could come into the forefront very, very strongly this month for you all to be dealt with, to be worked through. And you could see major shifts in that. Um, if there's a relationship that you've been holding on to out of fear of losing it or being overly attached to it or sort of losing yourself in it, um, you could see that sort of fall away or major sort of um, upheavals in that to sort of uh, dislodge that sort of clinginess or that attachment uh, to get the relationship to a healthier space, whether that's with the person or without the person. Um, or if it's like moving towards the person or moving away from the person. And that includes family as well. So if there's somebody who has been overstepping bounds with you, who is uh, who you feel overly burdened by their presence or by their continuing to invade your space or whatever, that can come up to be dealt with this month, especially. Um, 
Yeah, so foundations to relationships. And that's also like how you show up to relationships as well. Does that need to be taken uh, a closer look at? It's easy to point the finger and be like, well, this person has done this and this person is not doing this and they're not showing up in this way or they showed up in this way or whatever. It's very easy to point the finger. It's much more difficult to look at how like we are showing up to relationships and like, is it the right relationship? And we may want it to be the right relationship, but maybe it's really not and we're trying to force it. And so then we're showing up in a different way that's not authentic and you get the drift. So there's a lot here around the foundations to relationships, but not only how those other people are showing up in those relationships, but how we are showing up in those relationships. So a lot, a lot, a lot coming in throughout the month of October for you all around that. And also with the community. So it there's also that same kind of tone when it comes to um, our sort of immediate connection with the community, if that's relevant for you. And so if you're like a volunteer or you give of your time, is that time being taken advantage of? Or are you, could you give more time, right? So again, it's kind of like the focus is being put on the foundations of these interactions, of these relationships, very much throughout October for you all. Um, <clears throat> and also because you are eight energy, there's something here about paying attention to the integrity behind your influence. Um, eights by nature are can, can be very influential. They can have sort of a very, um, a gift for influencing others. And so it's, you have to be very mindful of how you're using that power, how you're using that gift. If you're using it to get what you want in your relationships with other people, um, that's going to boomerang back to you. And that's going to be one of those foundations that you need to look at. There needs to be integrity behind that and how you're using that power, right? How you're using that status, that influence, whatever. So that could very much come into play as well and may require some modification. Um, <clears throat> for the full moon for you all that's occurring on the 9th, there's a lot coming in here. This is 15, six energy for you all. So again, we've got that relationship component, the community component finances also in, in, in like how it affects your home life, right. Um, could come into play as well. There's a lot coming in with this 15, six energy around indecision, self-sabotage, the need for freedom, freedom and expression, freedom in, of like independence in like um, a situation, right? That could be like, again, financial freedom or um, <clears throat> freedom from a relationship or whatever, you know, however that comes in. But remember, it's six energy. So it's going to be around like love, how you love, how you um accept love, uh, finances, how it affects the home, the home environment, that sort of thing. So there's a lot to do with like freedom. It might be like there's maybe there's some financial burdens around your home and you want to get that financial freedom out from underneath that burden. There could be opportunities to do that or figure out how to do that, that sort of thing. But there's also this energy of self-sabotage coming in because it's 16 or I'm sorry, it's 15 energy as well. So it's kind of like, where are you self-sabotaging yourself? It's like the freedom is there, but you keep self-sabotaging yourself to like not be able to attain it. So that could be brought to light at this time as well. There's a lot here around discernment, making sure that you're being very discerning in your decisions and like um, who you have in your uh, immediate environment, who you're allowing in, who you're allowing to dictate how you run your home, whatever, right? So you kind of get the drift. And there's definitely something here around like your indecisiveness self-sabotaging you. And so where can you be more decisive? Where can you sort of take that power back? And so that could come to um, be illuminated at the time of the full moon as well. Now for this eclipse for you all, this has the potential. I know you're probably sick of hearing this. Uh, you all have been working with 13-4 energy actually for a few months now on and off, which is very transformative energy. It's it's like Pluto energy. It's death, transformation, rebirth. Um, so 
that is the energy that you're working with at this uh, eclipse. And so, which is happening on October 25th. So for you all, you're working with 13-4 energy, which is going to potentially bring major shifts in areas where the foundation is not stable or secure, where, um, again, you're kidding yourself about something or someone is being deceitful or um, you're you're f- trying to force something to work that isn't meant to be working or whatever. But it's also bringing to light where it is that you need to continue to have that resiliency, keep going because you're working on your pearl. So there's a lot here. It's sort of like, two-sided like double not a double-edged sword but it's like it's there's a lot of nuances to this energy and to this eclipse so there's a lot of inspiration a lot of uplifting energy that could come in that's assisting you in persevering like keep going towards making that pearl right because you're almost there but there's also like this very disruptive energy with a 13-4 and this eclipse that could come in, but that disruptive energy is gonna come in where it needs to. And that's what you need to keep telling yourself is, okay, this is a shift, this is a major change, this is disruptive, but there's a reason for it. What is that reason? And what is it trying to lead me towards? So um, there is, again, this, this potential for some major shifts in foundations around this time some can feel really really good some can feel very disruptive and so again those ones that feel uncomfortable or disruptive it's just really important that you ask yourself why is this being disrupted at this time um so yeah so so this could be a very powerful month for eights i think every month is powerful for eights but but this one could be very very powerful um especially because it's, it's a little, it feels a little bit more sensitive because again, it's sort of like potentially dealing with things very close to home uh, and bringing things up very close to home to be kind of like, again, like worked through awakenings or to encourage and light that spark to continue to encourage you to continue to be resilient and persevere. So I hope this is helpful. Uh, Yeah powerful months or powerful energies coming in for you all eights but you got this that this is your this is your jam (laughs) all right eights take care bye for now